Why is my chest beating fast too? <laughs> Log in. <laughs> Oh my god, holy shit. Yes. You got it? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! I got it! Alright. Congratulations. Um, I love that video and, um, uh, we love your, we love your enthusiasm. Uh, we love your energy. We love your intelligence. We love all the good decisions you make. My name's Christoph Gutentag. I'm the Dean of Undergraduate Admissions here at Duke. If you had bothered to read all the way down to the end of the letter that started with the words, congratulations, you would see my signature. Um, we, my colleagues and I are thrilled to have you join us this fall, and we are thrilled to have, uh, to have over 700 of you tonight, uh, join us for, for our program. Um, it'll, it'll last for about, uh, about an hour. I am joined by two wonderful colleagues at Duke. Uh, one, the first is Toddy Steelman, who, um, after serving as Dean of the Nicholas School of the Environment, was named Vice President and Vice Provost for Climate and Sustainability here at Duke. Um, uh, she will have the opportunity, she will be speaking with you in a little bit. Um, we take our national and global responsibilities very seriously, none more than our commitment to the climate. And Duke actually has a climate commitment that is an important part of, of what we do. And nobody is more important uh, to that than uh, Vice President and Vice Provost Steelman. We'll also be joined uh, by Deb Reisinger, Professor of the Practice in Romance Studies, Director of the Language Outreach Initiatives, and was recently named Interim Dean of Academic Affairs, which really uh, puts her at the center of the academic enterprise here at Duke. And, and in that respect, both, both of our guests are really going to be central to your experience at Duke and, and, and to your time here at Duke, to your education um, and, and to your learning how to make a difference in the world and how to have an impact and, and how to grow and how to learn um, and how to, be, how, how to be good, thoughtful, intelligent, responsible citizens of the Duke community, citizens of the nation, citizens of the world. So you have that to look forward to. Before we start and before I turn it over to my colleagues um, who are who are uh, so important in terms of what you will be experiencing there, I, I do want to take advantage to mention a couple of things. Um, first of all, and I know you've heard it from a lot of people, but but congratulations. My staff, the staff in the admissions office and I, having read your applications, having read the letters of recommendation on your behalf, having read your essays, having looked at what you've been involved in, um, having read interviews, um, seen videos, uh, you have worked very hard. You've, you've, you've done a lot. You've juggled an incredible number of responsibilities uh, and, ac and activities. Um, you, you, worked, you worked tirelessly and 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 more than diligently to make this possible uh the, the it's been a tough four years uh COVID has been a part of it for everybody good job well done we're proud of you um i i know the people that you know uh who that you know and that know you are proud of you so um great job enjoy your last semester enjoy your last semester of school you're in this interesting position where you're still you're still in one position. You're still a high school student. You you still are finishing um, your career as a high school student, and yet you already know where you're going to be 
come August. And, and so that, that's, an, that's an unusual situation to be able to know that far ahead of time that things will be different, but that you know how it will be different. So um, enjoy the time between now and then. I will say, as the Dean of Admissions, please don't enjoy it too much. Um, you know, we do expect you to maintain the, the, the level of, of academic behavior, academic and personal behavior that we've seen in you before. Um, so stay good, um, but, but do take the opportunity to, to enjoy the months ahead of you. Oh, that's the first thing I wanted to say. Um, the second thing I want to say is, you know, most of your classmates are not in your situation. And I think it's important for you to be kind and respectful and supportive of your classmates. They are, uh, you know, they are your colleagues. They are your friends. Um, being supportive of each other is, is a lot of what being a Duke student is about. It's one of the things that, that I believe distinguishes us. It's one of the things that, that makes the, the rigor of this place a positive experience is the way that that students support each other and they help each other and they're kind to each other. So so if so be that way to your to your students, uh, to your friends in high school who who haven't who haven't known, who don't know yet where they're going to be next fall. So so be nice, be respectful, be supportive. Um, they will appreciate it and and will appreciate it. I also want to say, you know, nobody gets to this position. Nobody gets to the position that you're in without having been encouraged and supported and helped along the way. And if there are one or two people that have been particularly important to you, that have really made a difference and 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 it, it may be somebody that you know, you know that that you're close to now. It may be a teacher from five years ago or seven years ago or 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 two years ago. It may be somebody that you worked for. It may be a family member. Somebody made a difference. Somebody pointed you in the right direction. Somebody supported you when you needed it, encouraged you when you needed it, um, uh, really made this possible for you. So if there's so think about who that might be and 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 thank them. Take the opportunity, take the opportunity tonight to 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 thank them. Um, call them, um, email them, text them, uh, but but let them know how much you appreciate their contribution to what you are about to experience and everything that you're going to, you know, everything, all the good things that are going to happen to you and that have happened to you. Um, that that appreciation that appreciation is a good thing. Um, just just two more things. Um, you're in this great situation. Uh, it's an enviable position. You've done a thousand things well and a thousand things right. Um, if if there's a risk to take, if there's if there's a time to try something new. If there's a time to to get outside of the bubble that that you're in, now's the time to do it. Um, failure, don't fail your courses. All right, let me just let me just say that. Please don't fail any courses. But but there are a thousand things to try, and and it's it's okay it's okay to fail. Um, I, I actually was having lunch the other day with a venture capitalist who's a Duke alum. Um, who was telling me about the four mentors that he, all of whom experienced very significant failures. And he talked about what, you know, sort of how he learned, how they learned, how he learned um, that, that, that responding to failure, growing out of failure, um, recovering from failure um, is just, is an important part of success. So if, if there's some chances to take, if there are things to try that are new, if there's a comfort zone to be, to be gotten out of, um, you know, the next couple of months is not a bad time. Is not a bad time to do that. Um, finally, it, it wouldn't be Duke if I didn't use a sports metaphor. So um, when you come to Duke and you're in an environment where you've worked really hard to get here and everybody around you has worked really hard to get here and you're used to success. And frankly, you're used to success on top of success. You're used to a string of successes. Um, you're very good at what you're doing. You're very good at what you're doing, um, but there's more, right? You are you are high school good. 
and and we want to make you college good and graduate school good and professional good and life good. Um, be coachable. Keep in mind that the people who are here, the faculty in particular, are just exceptionally good at what they do, and they love elevating students. And and that doesn't happen, um, you know, without you realizing that that you have things to learn. And and so be open to learning, be coachable, um, respond well when people when people share with you that there's that you can do better. And, and they, will, they will help you be better. They will show you how to be better. So, so think about that. And when you get onto campus, um, flunch me. I love spending time with students who are through, who, who've just gone through the admissions process, um, who, uh, and, and who, are, who are experiencing Duke. So um, I love to flunch. I love to be flunched. Um, don't be afraid to get in touch. Let me know. And, um, and 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 I will be I will look forward to learning from you. And with that, I am going to turn it over to um, to our first to our first uh, participant, interim dean professor and 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 dean Deb Reisinger, um, who's going to share share some of her insights. And uh, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Christoph. It is great to be here, and that video absolutely gave me chills. So thank you for sharing that again. Um, I'm Deb, and I have been teaching at Duke for the last 24 years, and every year gets better, and every class of students gets better, too. So I cannot wait to meet you all. And I just want to say a few words um, to welcome you here. We're so excited that you're here, and I can assure you that you chose well. We know that you chose Duke first, and we are delighted about your decision. Duke um, and the Duke experience is, is truly unique. Um, we are unique in that we offer students a liberal arts experience at an R1 institution. And that means that you get an entire, just an absolutely incredible education, not only from some of the best teachers, but also the best researchers in a whole variety of fields. And that is a, a really unique experience that we offer here. We have robust multi-tiered advising that'll support you along your way as you select your courses and guide you to your intellectual pathway, meeting the requirements that we have for breadth and depth and, and all of the academic goodies that, that, that will become part of your experience here. We are incredibly interdisciplinary as well, um, an institution that really emphasizes ingenuity and exploration. And so students get to really dive deeply into some of the biggest problems facing the world, whether that be climate, as Tati's going to talk about, migration, equity, AI, or what have you. And we do that from a multipli multiplicity of, of different disciplinary fields. And so that makes it really interesting for students and for faculty as well. But I think one of the most important things to, to leave you with is that we just care deeply about our students as people, not just about your intellectual development and you know why you're here and all the great things that you did to get you here, but we care about you as people. So we want to congratulate you um, for coming here. We know how hard you worked to become a Blue Devil from all the late nights you spent studying and all the choices that you made that, that helped you get, get here whether that's extracurricular, co-curricular, what have you. Um, so please take a moment to breathe that in. Soak in all of this feeling. It's it's pretty easy sometimes to just congratulate yourself and move on to the next thing. And, and I really would just um, really love it if you would just take it in for a little bit, not just you, but your parents too, who did so much to support you um, to get you here. So congratulations. Secondly, I want to remind you that you are here to explore. Um, Duke has an incredible array of opportunities for you here, and you have until the second semester of your sophomore year to declare a major. And, you know, Christoph mentioned flunching earlier. I had a flunch with a former student today who's a junior now, and I told him that I was going to be speaking to you tonight, and did he have any recommendations? And he said, you know, before I started Duke, I had four four-year plans laid out with all of the courses I was going to take and all of the things I was going to do. And I was like, four, that's that's a lot. Uh, tell me more. Which one did you choose? And he said, I chose none of them. They were all wrong for me, as it turned out. I took this really amazing course in whatever it was, 
And it changed everything. It changed my trajectory. It allowed me to really find what makes me feel alive. And so in any way that you can, I would encourage you to make space to find time to really to really discover what makes you tick, what makes you unique as a person, what is your passion, what makes you come alive. And then before you know it, you'll settle into your intellectual home. But try to resist the temptation to map everything out in advance. We really would love for you to experience all of the things that Duke offers. And that 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 includes being flexible and being humble and being open to new experiences and, and to failing, as, as he mentioned earlier. And so finally, I just want to reassure you, um, sometimes it's really exciting to have this wonderful news, but it can also be a little bit daunting. So I just want to reassure you that we are here to support you all along your academic journey. Um, we have, as I said, a, 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 just a huge team, teams, actually multiple teams of people here for you to support you, to nudge you, to guide you, and, and even to learn alongside you as you explore and discover. So we cannot wait to meet you. We're so excited and I, and I can't wait to see you in August. Thanks so much. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Toddy Steelman. Christoph introduced me earlier today. I'm the new vice president and vice provost for climate and sustainability here at Duke. It's a brand new position that was just created um, on July 1st and signifies the commitment that we really have made to climate here at Duke University. When we launched the Duke Climate Commitment back in September 2022, what we imagined is that students just like you would end up applying to Duke because of our climate commitment and want to be part of our efforts. Um, so I am so curious to know how many of you out there were motivated to apply to Duke because of the Duke climate commitment, because this is, this is what I am here to do, is to really promote our climate commitment and to enlist all of you in that work. So I'm really honored to be here this evening and to welcome you as we get started. Um, at that time, again, back in 2022, we imagine that Duke would be working towards a future that was not just carbon neutral, but thriving, abundant, joyful, um, and full of promise for all. Um, and what we want to do is activate every single facet of our institution to create climate change solutions. And that means our education mission, our research mission, the way we use our operations and facilities on campus, the way we engage externally with our partners and our local community, everything. Um, and this is really important because we, we subscribe um, and em embrace the idea that higher education has to play an important role in service to society. We have a responsibility as higher education to play um, uh, in service to society. So it's you know it's not um, it's not a secret. Higher education is really under assault these days, and it's incumbent on us, I think, to demonstrate how we fulfill our obligation and that promise. And focusing on climate change is one way for us to do that. It demonstrates a sense of purpose. It puts us in the position of serving a higher order goal, and I think it's really important for universities to be doing this kind of work these days. Another goal for us when we launched the Duke Climate Commitment was we also wanted Duke faculty, staff, students, and alumni to feel personally connected to our climate efforts and contribute to our success. So the climate commitment is not something that's being done by somebody else. The Duke Climate Commitment is widespread and it's an open invitation to our entire community to become involved. And that includes you, right? You're the newest members of our community. And so um, I'm gonna give you a little imposter syndrome warning Every single one of you has something amazing to contribute to our Duke Climate Commitment, and it might not be obvious at first, but I assure you it is there somewhere. Um, there is something that you have to contribute to what we're doing, because our goal is to create an atmosphere of creativity and free exchange that really drives forward our climate ambitions. And that's not gonna happen unless you lean in and contribute with confidence that you have something to bring the, to the table. And I am 100% certain that you have that. Um, at Duke, we also pride ourselves on interdisciplinarity um, because we know that if we are going to solve really hard problems, we need to have multiple perspectives involved. And why is that? Because when we have multiple perspectives, 
when we identify, when we have multiple pers perspectives, we identify different dimensions to the problem. We also identify different potential solutions and we're much stronger when we work together because no single person can know everything. It's just impossible. And our individual skills, our abilities, our talents will all go farther if we can use them in collaboration with others to address the pressing social problems that we faced, just like climate change. And in interdisciplinary environments, we all need to work together. It's really important to cultivate those skills. How do you collaborate? How do you work with others? How do you disagree civilly? How do you learn to accept that not everybody will think the same way you will? Um, these skills only get better if you practice them. And so I encourage you to reach out and to lean into areas where you can learn something new, something our other two speakers have already really addressed. And I don't, and don't expect yourself to be perfect, um, but do have expectations to have fun, to, to learn, to meet new people um, as you innovate and contribute. We also have several areas um, I think I've already mentioned we have several areas in our in in the in that we are focusing on in our climate and sustainability work across the campus: research, external engagement, community partnerships, operations and facilities, and of course education. So when it comes to education, our goals for Duke are to have students at every single level, level whether you're an undergraduate, a professional student, a doctoral student, um, choose Duke because of the experiential applied and immersive opportunities that allow you to become change agents. Um, because we know that taking action or finding ways to take action is important because climate and sustainability challenges can be really paralyzing given their enormity. Um, they can feel so big, they just feel like you just wanna pull your sheet over top of your head and stay head. But we know that students um, and many others suffer from climate anxiety and depression because of that. And there are a lot of people that are very cynical about what we can do when it comes to climate change. I am not one of those people, <laughs> that's for sure. So one of our solutions at Duke is to create action, to create agency and to create hope. So we want our students, we want our faculty, we want our staff to lean into the narratives of hope and possibility about what we all can do and what we can do together. And what better way to do this than on our own campus? Because we wanna use our own campus as our own living learning laboratory for improving our own climate and sustainability efforts. Another educational goal is for us to find ways for all majors, all degrees, and all careers to be infused with actionable knowledge and practices in climate and sustainability. Now, this might not mean it's your sole focus in all instances, but you would pursue some learning and some knowledge that is appropriately climate adjacent to your field, whatever that ends up being. Because I defy you to find a profession today where climate change and sustainability is not relevant. So the question for us is how do we appropriately prepare you, our students, for this reality? Um, and this is gonna be very different in each school. Um, it's gonna be very different for each major. And that's a challenge that we are going to address in this coming year to try to find these appropriate pathways for engineers, for economists, for biologists, for policy wonks, for linguists, for artists, for everyone. So congratulations, welcome. Uh, it's such an exciting time for you all. We are so excited to have you here and to help us achieve our bold ambitions as we activate every single facet of our institution um, to deploy you as a generation of climate change cha change makers. Um, because at Duke, uh, we are in it for life and we want you to be in it with us. So thank you so, so very much again, and I will turn it back over. My name is Alyssa Marsh. I am a senior admissions officer here um, and a Duke alum, um, class of 2020. And I'm so excited that you were all here today. Now we're going to turn over to the um, the Q and A and the panel um, portion of our evening, um, and we'll get started with a couple questions. Um, we have some. I see we have some technical questions when it comes to you know when should these scores be submitted by and sort of those. Um, and I'll pass. And some of our admissions staff will answer those behind the scenes. Um, but I'll get started with one. Um, and um, Dr. Reisinger and Dr. Steelman, if you could uh, hop back on camera, we would love to have you um, for the panel. Thank you so much. Um, 
So the first question is, can we double or dual major um, across the two colleges, um, such as one major in the Pratt School of Engineering and one major in the Trinity College of Arts and Sciences? I'll start. How about if I, I'll start with that and cool. uh, and then my my colleagues can chime in. Um, it's it's unusual to do to do two degrees across or to do a double major across colleges. If you are enrolled in the Pratt School of Engineering, typically it's possible to do a sec. It's possible, unusual, but possible to do a second major in in, in the School of Arts and Sciences in Trinity College. If you're in Trinity College, you can do a second major in Trinity College. You can't do a second major in the School of Engineering. So it's it's not unusual for students to double major. It's not unusual for students to have a minor or a certificate or even two. Um, it's it is, uh, but it is it is unusual for a student. It's not unknown. It's unusual for a student in the Pratt School to have a second major in in Trinity College. Um, and, but if you're in Trinity College, you can't do a second major in the School of Engineering. So I, I will say that, but I know that my faculty colleagues who work more closely with current students may have nuances about that or not. You're, you're absolutely right. It, it was great to hear that back. <laughs> um, and I will say that the students in Pratt do take courses in Trinity. So you might not have a second major, but that doesn't mean that you can't take all of the courses that you want, you know, depending on what sort of schedule you have. So I've taken engineering students abroad to France where they, because they speak French and they want to do an internship selling perfume. I mean, there, there are so many ways to make your experience interdisciplinary, um, but it might not look as neat as say a double major. Cool. Awesome, thank you. Um, another question is when do we learn about who our advisor for our course selections is and um, when do course selections happen? I, know we, I was going to say, I'm not sure about when you'll learn the name of your advisor, but um, enrollment is now in August. Um, and so you've got quite a bit of time um, to begin looking at that. Um, it won't be announced until I believe April, but um, first year enrollment is in August. And and I think, I I believe that you are assigned an academic advisor in the, in the late spring or summer. And if if I'm remembering correctly, your first contact, your first contact with an academic advisor uh, occurs during the summer. And, and my sense is, my experience has been that in-person meetings between advisors and their advisees, and most faculty, most pre-major advisors um, have a cohort of generally around four to eight first year students who, who they're advising. Typically that happens as a group, really days after, within days after move-in. So Alyssa, I don't know, what was, your, Alyssa, what was your experience when you, when you came to Duke? Yes. Um, so when I was coming to Duke, I remember meeting with my advisor even before I stepped foot on campus. Um, and then I was able to meet them in person um, once I once I arrived. And so they helped me select those classes before the first day um, of class. Um, so that'll happen for you. Um, and then you'll get to know them even more throughout the first two years before you declare a major. Awesome. All right. So the next question, this is for um, Christoph. In terms of maintaining academic performance, should we notify admissions if our GPA changes at all or if it only changes significantly? Um, that's what what a good question. What a good question. And of course, it depends on what on 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 what our definition of significantly is, I suppose. Um, but no minor minor changes you do not have to notify us of uh, if 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 your if if your level of achievement is pretty much what it's been then um then you don't you don't need to notify us of 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 every of every little change if it if it represents something significantly different i mean where you really feel as if um, it's, it's really not what you've done before, then two things. First, let us know three things, maybe one, 
let us know. And the second is, let us know right away. Uh, I, I, I can't stress enough that, that better things happen when, when people notify us. And by us, really, I mean, I mean everybody at Duke, uh, the earlier you let people know when something's not going the way you expected it to, the more people can help you. That's true in your classes. That's true in your activities. That's true about your health. Um, it's really true about pretty much every aspect of it. Um, you've been so good and you have you have done so well. Um, and that, that that sometimes when things aren't when things aren't going so well, people people don't want to share it or they think they can just take care of it. Um, the the adults at Duke and and frankly many of the students as well, but 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 the adults at Duke understand that um, going to college is a challenge. There's a lot going on. It's very different than going to high school. And and we adapt and we change and we adjust. And, and um, if there, I am betting, I am betting that most faculty, if you ask most faculty what they wish students would do, um, at near or at or near the top of their list, it would be, I wish a student would have told me earlier that they needed some help or that there was something that they didn't understand. Um, I, I know so many faculty here, they're, they are just so ready to help you. People here want you to succeed. Okay, that was a big digression and I apologize for that. Um, so so Alyssa, I'll turn it back over to you. Un unless one of my colleagues wants to add. All right. Um... Yeah, that, no, that was great. Thank you so much. Um, um, I really like this question. As a first, um, as a first year, who are three people you would introduce introduce yourselves to um, to explore different opportunities? Ooh. I guess this will be different. For, maybe everyone can answer this one. Um, the faculty are going to have a much better, much better answers than I would. Okay, I'll go. <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> three people to introduce yourself to. First of all, this might be four people if you're taking a regular load. I would introduce yourself to each of your faculty members. Um, go to their office. It, it can be daunting at first because you feel like you have to come with an agenda. You don't. We're expecting you. We want you to come. We're literally sitting there most of the time by ourselves waiting for students. It's, it's very sad. <laughs> so please come. We'd love to talk to you and get to know you. So that's four people. That's too many. Um, and then I would um, think about what makes you excited. Like, what are the things about Duke that made you want to come to Duke? Um, I'm not saying to go introduce yourself to the new basketball coach or whatever, but, you know, what what um, what do you like about it? You know, are you interested in music? Um, are you curious about, I don't know, some kind of design idea? Um, go find the person who runs that club, right? So introduce yourself to someone who's who's developing something that seems kind of interesting and then find another student down the hall that you've seen who's been maybe sitting by themselves and imagine what that feels like, right? Because we've all been in those shoes and basically everybody's just nervous inside. We're all the same, right? So introduce yourself to that person and invite them out to lunch or go sit with them somewhere and take them to coffee. That's my answer. <laughs> I don't know if I can improve on that. It's so good. Um, uh, Deb, that those are all things that I would say, you know, I think that everybody's a little bit lonely, I think sometimes when they start. So finding those people and recognizing that, you know, you are feeling, um, a little intimidated is the exact same way. Lots of people around you are also feeling a little intimidated. And I think if you embrace that perspective, it makes it a little bit easier to say hi and if we all say hi, it makes the whole place feel just a little bit more welcoming and a little less intimidating. The other thing I would say is that, um, you know, a lot of the students who uh, participate in Duke sports are integrated into our classes, integrated into our dorms, and they are people too. And I think sometimes for our student athletes, it can be a little bit lonely. Um, people are often even more intimidated to talk to them, but, you know, they are people too. 
Um, I think those are the only two things I can add to Deb's fantastic answer. Uh, I'll just ch I'll just chime in with one thing. One of the things that just shocked me, I still remember this after I graduated from college, was how hard it was to meet people. Um, so you you have no idea what a what a golden age of meeting interesting people going to college is because for the first time, probably for the maybe for the first time, you'll be with every everybody will be as smart as you but they will be from all kinds of other places. So it's this, it's, it, you have this important thing in common and you'll be at Duke, right? I mean, you'll be at Duke, um, but they're from, but they're from everywhere. Um, and, and, a, and, and people are just so interested as, 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 as my colleague said, they're so interested in meeting other people. They're so open to it. Um, it's, it's a, it is a golden opportunity to, to spend time with people not like you um, most of you have grown up with people like you, not all of you, uh, but many of you have gone to school with people like you. Um, here's a chance to, to spend some time and to really get to know people not like you and to seek those situations out and to, um, and to, and to, and to join a club that's, that, that, that takes, that takes rookies, um, like you. Awesome. Those are great answers. Thank you so much. Um, I'm not sure if anyone will have the answer to this um, on this panel, but a lot of people have been asking about housing and quad X and how that dynamic has, how that shift has changed um, campus. And if anyone has any thoughts on quad X, um, we would love to hear it. Yeah, I'm not sure how much you um, are all involved with it, but. I'll just say from what I've heard, yeah. um, from, from, from what I've heard, people have really appreciated the 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 connections between the upper between the older students and the first year students and and knowing where and knowing where they'll be so my my sense has been um my my sense has been that the people have appreciated it um and they've appreciated knowing where they're going to be uh when in in their in their sophomore junior and senior and if they want their senior year so um that's what i've heard but um that's um that's that's my that's my take on it. Yeah, that that resonates with what I've heard as well. And I I've also talked to several colleagues who are involved pretty heavily in Quadex because each Quadex has you know a faculty sponsor, and they have said just how delightful it's been to get to know the students. And so you know in your first year you're living in a dorm and there is a faculty and residents who live with you, and Quadex is is a bit different, right? So the faculty are organizing events um, and helping facilitate these these. You, you've heard us say connection, you've heard us say belonging, really noticing that this is really important. I think especially post-pandemic, especially smartphone worlds, you know, some of us didn't grow up with these things, um, but they can interfere with the ability to really connect with one another. And so we're really looking creatively to um, find ways to support students so that they can connect, um, not just on a short-term basis, but over the long haul. Um, so I I've heard really good things about it. Great. Thank you so much. Um, and there's a couple of questions on specifics with rooming. Um, we can get those details to you um, over email. Um, I will say that it is, um, there's going to be a questionnaire that will be sent to you all um, for you to fill out. And then we will have a kind of random, but kind of planned assigned roommate for you um, in the fall. And I don't know when that exact date is when you'll find out, um, but that's just to answer a couple of um, questions that I've been seeing. Um, I have a question that I think, um, as an incoming Duke student, I would have wanted to know, um, about Durham, um, and how the city is and how, how Duke is connected to Durham, um, and what maybe your favorite part about being in this area is. So I'll jump in, um, and just answer that by saying that Durham is an incredibly lively and small enough city that you can actually get to know it. I think those are two really great attributes around it. We are a growing foodie haven and hub. So there's lots of really interesting restaurants um, and places to eat uh, that I hope that you will take advantage of and get off of campus and get out in downtown. We also have a really thriving arts community. And so getting out to see a performance, whether it's music, whether it's theater, whether it's dance, we have a lot going on. So there's a there are a lot of opportunities 
to go to leave campus and really get involved in whether it's food or arts or, you know, just meeting the people in the community. Uh, so I think it's just a really great, uh, it's like I said, the size of the city is terrific because it's actually knowable. There, there's also a lot of nature to be um, explored near Duke. We've got some fantastic trails. The Albuler Trail is right by campus. And then Duke Forest, which is these, I don't know how many acres it is, but just masses and masses of space where students have the opportunity to do research, but also to just go hiking on the weekend and get out a little bit and, you know, take a breather. It's it's really beautiful. For those of you who haven't been here yet, I think you will find that it is a stunning, it's just stunningly beautiful space with tons of trees everywhere. Um Durham is also a space where we extend our academic learning. Um, I'm really involved in civic learning and civic engagement, and students have tons of opportunities to work within the, the communities that are in Durham, um, not in a helping capacity as much as in an asset-based um, way where we see what this community of Durham offers and the history of it. Um, we've worked, um, we've had students work with um, Durham locals to put on museum pop-ups about the history of immigration in Durham and, and all kinds of things. So it's um, it's a really vibrant place. And as Tati said, I would even say it's an established foodie space at this point. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a new restaurant popping up. So it's a really fun place to go out. Um, we, you know, people used to say that Duke is a bubble, but I, but I think, you know, having been here for so long, it's really changing. Students are going off campus you know, the first year living situation places you really close to some very, you know, nice spots where I think it's really easy to get around to and get to know Durham. So I would would actually encourage folks to do that whenever possible. You know, we've got a robust bus system. It's easy to grab a, an electric bike or, or a real bike <laughs> or an Uber and just get around a little bit and explore the area. I don't want to mention the school down the road, but we do have a bus that goes to it in case you do want to just sort of get outside of Durham and, and explore North Carolina a little bit more. Yeah, I'll just I'll just finish by 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 adding that downtown Durham is literally within walking distance of East Campus, um, so you'll you'll be you'll be you'll be both within your community within the within the within the Duke community within the East Campus community, but also very close by to um, very very close by to downtown Durham. And if and if if ice cream is your weakness, um, you're in trouble. Uh, because there's there are lots of different places uh, to to indulge. So I'll just, that's just a that's either an opportunity or a warning, depending on how how you're feeling about ice cream. That is very true. Um, there's a great spot right by East Campus. It's super close, called Heavenly Buffaloes. And so if you are a wings person, that would be my recommendation, especially that first year when you live very close. <laughs> um, don't, don't miss the parlor. Right. Yeah. In the yeah, parlor, parlor, of course. Oh, so good. Um, okay, um, we have time for a couple more. Um, and this one is, what is the process that a freshman um, can find on campus research opportunities? I'll jump in with the Office of Undergraduate Research Support because we have a robust and growing office dedicated just to this. Um, this is a, I think Duke is really unique in this way as well. We offer students all kinds of research opportunities, whether you are in the humanities, the social sciences, or the natural sciences. Um, you'll see that some of your courses will be coded R, which means that they actually have an official research component to them, but there are other ways in which many faculty incorporate research into the courses that they're already doing. We also have a program called BAS Connections um, that incorporates research into most of its um, what would you say most of its projects um, and those also span the entire curriculum so keep an eye out for a bass keep an eye out for the r's that you'll see on your curricula and check out the office of undergraduate research support we have money and increasing money for students to actually um, spend their whole summer being mentored by faculty i'll add also my experience in talking with with undergraduates it's it's really astonishing and gratifying how responsive faculty are. Um, my experience in talking with students is, is um, they, they do a little research, they do, a, they do their homework, they find, they find a handful of faculty that are doing work that, that might, uh, that they think would interest them. And they just, they just email them. And it's really interesting the degree to which faculty respond. They respond positively, or if they can't respond positively, they recommend somebody else. 
I also I also think what's what's so important for for people to understand, um, fa faculty at faculty at Duke, um, the the overwhelming majority have have spent big chunks of their career doing research, um, and doing some research collaboratively, and, and and with other people, and and in particular, it's worth remembering. That's as true in the social sciences um, and the humanities as it is in the in the natural sciences. And to to for many, many faculty, the opportunity to to work with undergraduates, to mentor undergraduates, to benefit from the work of undergraduates uh, is is really is really significant. A, a, a friend of mine, a friend of mine who's writing who's writing a book about, about he's literally writing a book about the lies that politicians tell. Um, I, I know which will come as a shock to all of us, um, but it's a book about the lies of politicians. Well, he, he, is, he is employing undergraduates to help him with his research um, and depending on them. So it, you know, it, it spans the range. Uh, if, if you are interested, um, that those opportunities are there and duke is a place that rewards asking duke is a place that rewards people asking so i'll i'll just i'll get at that great thank you so much um and we're going to wrap up with this question is what is something that you are looking forward to at duke in this year or in the near future um just so we can get excited for the things that are to come well, you know, it's our centennial year. Um, so happy birthday, Duke. It's we're a hundred. Um, we don't even look our age. So isn't that <laughs> fabulous? So we've got a lot of events that are going on um across the campus all this year. And so I, you know, there the that will be carrying on when you join us. So the centennial celebration will still be going on. It started in January and it'll carry through all the way through the end of the year. The other thing that I'll tell you that I am personally excited about 2024 is that Duke will be carbon neutral in 2024, um, which is a really mark badge of um, honor for us. We've worked very hard for decades to actually make this happen. And we will be carbon neutral this year, far ahead of our peers, many of our peers. And um, yeah, so those are two things that I'll mention. Uh, that, you know, on on the other end of the important spectrum, uh, I will, I will, I will, on, uh, going hyper local as opposed to global, um, uh, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to football. We have a new football coach. And, and honestly, um, I love what's happened with Duke football over the last five years, and uh, and I'm looking forward to more. So that's that's me. Well, you know, I'm going to land somewhere in the global space, so mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to seeing what we're doing with study abroad. We had a record number of students studying abroad this fall, and our numbers are over 50 percent, and I am planning on taking a select group of Duke students to France this summer. And I was just reviewing applications. So I can't wait to interview these guys next week. <laughs> Wonderful. That is awesome. Thank you guys so much for um, joining us and being our panelists today. Um, if we did not get to your question, I know there's a lot of questions um, in the Q&A box. Um, we have an email um, address that you can send them to, which is bluedeviledays at duke.edu. Um, and you are welcome to send those questions. I will be answering those um, and, we'll, and we'll try to get those answered quickly for you. Um, there are a couple more sessions also coming up. I saw some questions on focus, um, some gap year questions, and we have info sessions for those. Um, we also have some student panels coming up on January 29th and February 4th. The focus session is on February 6th, and the gap year info session is on February 13th. And so all these sessions are going to be recorded um, and posted on our undergraduate admissions YouTube channel um, for you to check out if you cannot make it, including this session, um, if you want to rewatch anything. Um, but with that, I want to thank you all so much for coming and, um, and congratulate you on your um, acceptance and welcome you to the family. So go Duke and have a good night. Thanks all. Have a good evening. Bye. Thanks for coming.